G'day everyone, welcome back to the channel. So in today's video, we're going to talk about how to solve your anterior hip pain symptoms. Now, the pain at the front of the hip can come from a number of different sources, but ultimately we want to break this video up into two parts. In the first half of the video, I want to take you guys through probably two exercises that will hopefully help you uh, very quickly address those symptoms at the front of the hip. It'll help that tissue settle, improve how it moves, and, and ultimately make it feel better as quickly as possible. And then once we've done that, we want to transition to the second half of the video, which is going to cover probably two main reasons for why that uh, pain happens at the front of the hip. Um, and those two areas can often, uh, at least one of them can sound a, a little bit counterintuitive, but there's some really strong clinical evidence to suggest that if you can nail these two um, sort of underlying causes of your anterior hip pain, um, then you can make sure that it doesn't come back again, or at least you can have the confidence that you're doing the right things um, and long term, you'll be pretty much free of that sort of stuff. Now, when we talk about pain at the front of the hip, as I said before, it can come from a, it can come from a, a number of different sources. We're talking sort of the psoas muscle, um, that iliopsoas complex. There's a capsule at the front of the hip. You have that rectus femoris tendon that attaches into the bony bit at the front of the hip. <clears throat> Excuse me. You've got some bursa in there. There's some fascia over the top. There's a whole bunch of different things that can become pain sensitive. Um, and also for those who aren't necessarily painful, but if you're someone who gets some clicking at the front of the hip, um, you know, that classic one where you're lying on your back and you lift your leg out straight and you feel it flicking and clicking at the front of the hip. All of this is basically an expression of the same root dysfunction. So even if you don't know specifically what the sort of the, the tissue is that's sore for you, if you work through these exercises by the end of it, hopefully it won't matter because, because hopefully you've addressed those symptoms and then you've got it, the underlying cause of those symptoms and the label may not matter as much. But for the purposes of this video, we're going to talk about it in terms of sort of anterior hip pain or hip flexor pain. Um, but again, it might be slightly different for you, but still give these exercises a go because it might still sort of help you reclaim that normal function regardless. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So, so the very first exercise that we want to get to basically is it's a very, very simple one. So if you know where your sort of pain at the front of the hip is, you can take a tennis ball, or in this case, a lacrosse ball, and you can place that, that ball in the area that feels sore. But more importantly, if you put some pressure on the tender spot for you and it really hurts, feel free to go hunting around that area to see if there's any extra tightness around that that's pulling some slack from the area. So you can feed some of that slack back into the area and help it settle down faster. So how that basically looks is, traditionally for most people, if you find that hip bone at the front, Generally, a lot of people will find there's some dysfunction just in from that. So in towards more the, the pelvic or the pubic area, um, not on the hip bone itself, not necessarily below the hip bone, but in from that hip bone and you'll sort of drop down into a sort of a fleshy canal. <clears throat> and we want to go looking for that tightness. So we're in this area and what we want to do is we want to start here and we just want to move around. So if you're right next to the hip bone and you come inwards, you should be able to find some really tender tight tissue pretty easily. And all we want to get you to do here is we can get you to let the ball press in. Make sure you're taking some comfortable deep breaths to tell your body and nervous system that everything's okay. We don't want it to freak out. You don't want to be sort of holding your breath or tensing up if it's really tender. Breathe your way through it. Um, so again, if it's really tender, what you can do is go looking for some tightness and then give everything a squeeze in that area. So tense up the tissue under the ball, give your butt a squeeze, hold for five seconds. And then when you relax, it should hopefully sink a little bit deeper into that tissue. It'll be a little more manageable, a little less painful long term. Now, if you're looking to sort of ramp it up a little bit, once you've found a really sort of tight and tender spot, what I'll get you to do, and you can't really see this very well in the video, but if I bend my knee, you might be able to more so, we want to get you to rotate that hip inwards and outwards. And sometimes it's a bit easier with your legs straight. Um, but again, you can do it without the leg straight with the knee bent. We're looking to find some of that tight tissue and almost shear it free. Now, if you can do this, what you can also do is compress the ball and then try and lift your knee off the ground. Now, we're not trying to extend your back here. We're literally just trying to extend your hip. So you're pushing your foot up into the air. And what we're doing is we're compressing that hip flexor. And as we take it into extension, we're lengthening that tissue um, underneath the pressure of the ball. So sort of shearing that tissue free. So the moral of this exercise is basically go looking for a spot that feels tight, tender or sore for you and then use some movement or some tensing of that muscle to get it to free up. And what you'll hopefully find is in a very short amount of time, 
not only will you get to sort of to the point where you can really locate the exact area that hurts for you or that sort of flicks and feels very tight, but in a short amount of time you'll be able to shear free that tissue and hopefully sort of decrease those symptoms immediately. Now it, it can obviously take a couple of days of working through this to get to the ultimate goal of feeling fantastic, but every time you do this, for it to be effective or for us to feel that it's effective, you have to walk away feeling like it's had an immediate impact on your pain and discomfort. So. Uh, make sure that you've got a test that you can do before and afterwards that reproduces your pain so that you can tell how much of a difference you've made with the ball. So it's exercise number one. Exercise number two is one that we've done a lot on the channel um, and it's the it's a hip flexor stretch. So it's the, it's the couch stretch basically. So, so again, if your hip bone is here and in from here is generally where a lot of that anterior hip pain resides, we, can, we want to use a power band and we want to get you into the couch stretch position. Now again, in a perfect world, you're gonna do this on a chair or a couch, but again, this is a more advanced version of the stretch, doing it on the floor. But the, what we're trying to do with it is, that there's two parts to the stretch. So you wanna keep your back straight, squeeze your glutes at the back. The first part is just pushing your hip to the ground and feel free to shift your hips from side to side to find where you feel the best version of your stretch is. So for me, if I come on the inside, I lose it. If I come more on the outside and forward a little bit, so more on an angle, and I can really find some sort of subtle tightness that I can't feel otherwise. Once you spend some time here, the second part of the stretch requires you to come up as tall as you can without extending through your back. So, so a lot of people might find that, again, if you're doing this on a chair, as you come up, it might be so tight that you can't even get to a vertical position. It's completely fine. Just come up to a point where you feel like you can find a comfortable version of your stretch. So for me, I don't have too many issues here. So... As I come up to sort of full, uh, full hip extension, um, being nice and up tall through my spine, I can feel a comfortable bit of tightness through the front of my hip. And if I shift a little bit more to the side, it makes it a little bit worse. Coming inside makes it easier. So I want to find that best version of the stretch. And then I want to push my hips forward to really amplify that. So again, staying here for a few seconds, give it a squeeze, uh, tense those muscles up, push your foot back into the chair or the wall and then relax, and then it should be a bit easier, and then you can sort of go further into that stretch, go hunting for that tightness, um, and take away some of that symptomatic discomfort that you might have. So, so again, two really effective ways to uh, free up or, or make those anterior hip pain symptoms better is to specifically go after the tightness and the stiffness and the pain around that area, but then also try and elongate and stretch and restore some normal motion to the hip flexors and the hip joint capsule underneath. Now, that hip joint capsule can become very stiff thanks to all the sitting that we do. We can be stuck in this 90 degree position. So the deep capsule around the hip, just the soft tissue that encapsulates the hip joint, can be sort of stuck in a shortened position all the time. And we don't often get into that sort of position where we extend that hip to full extension, which we're doing with the couch stretch. Um, and what we find is that by sort of feeding some more slack through the front of the hip joint tissue, whether it be the iliopsoas, uh, whether it be the hip joint capsule, Again, you can help quickly restore some normal function to that area and hopefully get those painful symptoms to, to go away quickly. So, so they're two of the, the best exercises that I've seen clinically that tend to get to the, the, the heart of that pain and discomfort. By the end of those exercises, hopefully you'll know exactly where it is, but also be able to locate it and improve on that by, and knowing that you've done so by doing that test and retest before and afterwards. So, so those two exercises come highly recommended. Now... As we always do in these videos, we want to transition to a conversation surrounding why that one part of your body is struggling compared to most of the other areas. So, um, so for me, the two areas that tend to create some of that um, dysfunction through the front of the hip are a stiff hip joint in general. So not just through the front of that hip joint, but the general hip joint being stiff and rusty. But the main one that I think gets missed a lot is the lower back. So if your lower back is a bit stiff and tight, those hip flexors attach into the front of that lower back, um, pretty much from the base of the rib cage down, it sort of fans up and sort of attaches in there. So if your back has become stiff and tight, you can almost pull a bunch of slack or send this sort of chain reaction of dysfunction into areas that it connects to, and that can be anywhere in the body. But what we often find is that if you do have some hip flexor tightness or some hip flexor dysfunction or anterior hip pain, there's often a, a hidden or some sneaky low back or sort of mid to low back dysfunction there as well that's potentially setting that hip up to fail in the first place. So, so the two exercises that we want to go through, again, they're not fancy exercises. If you've been following the channel, you would have seen these a few times before. 
but they're really important to put it into context to say, look, if you want this hip pain to go away and stay away, you've got to make sure that you're very competent at these exercises and that they really help sort of free up and mobilize the areas that we're looking at. So, so the first thing that we'll get to is the, uh, is the hip stuff. So again, we can use the band here and much like the couch stretch, you don't have to use a band, but it really helps get into the joint capsular stiffness that often sets a lot of tissue up or surrounding tissue up to fail. So if you can invest in one of these, they're a fantastic buy. Um, so again, they're called a power band or a jump stretch band. Um, any, any sort of band will do, including a TheraBand as well, but you just want enough tension to make a difference. So, so the setup is basically this. So, so we want you on all fours, and we want the band pulling straight out to the side. Now, for me, the band's on a little bit of an angle, but that's just where my anchor point to, uh, happens to be. Um, and what we want to do here is we want to take the opposite leg back, and all we're doing is we're keeping your trunk parallel to the ground and we're shifting everything back across over the top of that knee. But what we're looking to do here is we're trying to get some pressure through the back of the hip. So imagine that you're putting some pressure through your leg, but that thigh bone is trying to press out the back corner of your hip. And it's not so much a stretch that you'll feel, but you might find it's a little bit more of a subtle pressure at the side of the hip towards the back. That's the hip capsule being sort of challenged and stretched and mobilized. So... So what we want to get you to do here is we want to play around with your external and internal rotation. So for a lot of people, the internal rotation will be stiff. So as your foot comes out and that thigh internally rotates, take it out as far as you feel comfortable before you feel like your back starts to move. So for me, I'm okay in terms of hip internal rotation. So I can go relatively far. I'm going to dig your foot into the ground. And then again, shifting your hip and your body weight across back onto that, uh, that side. You can drop down if you need to, to, to really figure, uh, sorry, to find that tightness. If you're getting some groin pain, so you shouldn't get any hip pain at the front, but if you also get some groin pain, then what I generally suggest people do is that don't go down deep into that stretch. So you're still shifting across to the side, but you're not flexing your hip as much and jamming up that hip joint. So you'll still be able to find a good stretch at 90 degrees or higher. And then as that tissue starts to give, you'll feel more comfortable dropping down into that hip flex, <clears throat> more hip flex position, uh, and you won't get that same, that same kind of dysfunction. So I'm going to spend some time with the leg internally rotated, shifting your shoulders and hips across, finding where you feel the best tightness. Again, it isn't in the front of the hip or in the groin, but more in the side of the back. Once you've done that, we want to do the exact same thing, but with your foot or your leg externally rotated. So instead of it being outwards, that foot sweeps underneath, the back leg can block that. And it's the same thing. You can come down on it and across, depending on where you feel the best version of your tightness is. And for me, I can feel that right there. So again, we want to hang out here for a minute or two. <clears throat> we want to spend some time in that shape, really getting to that deeper sort of underlying hip joint stiffness. And what that does is as that hip moves a lot better, you're not going to be jamming up or annoying the front of the hip, which can happen if, the, if you're getting some impingement or some... Um, some bursitis or a tendonitis or just an irritated, uh, some irritated tissue through the front of that hip. So, so again, we want to feed some slack through the front of the hip via the couch stretch, but we also want the whole hip in general to move, um, which again will affect how the front feels. And adding that to the ball exercise to the front, then you've got some really strong um, tools to mobilize that hip in all these different areas uh, to feed some slack to the front of the hip and help it function better. Now the, <clears throat> excuse me, the next Part of this, and as I said before, is often the most overlooked part of hip flexor pain is the roll of the lower back. And I love this as an exercise because it's very, very simple. You can use a foam roller or you can use a lacrosse ball. Whatever you need to do is fine. But what we're looking for generally is we're not necessarily looking for low back dysfunction because the, the hip flexors don't necessarily, they aren't as influenced by the, the low, low back. We're actually looking towards the base of the rib cage, the top of the lower back. And what you'll hopefully find is you put the roller in that sort of slightly higher area. Again, as we always say, we're not trying to roll up and down on the, the roller, despite the name. We're just trying to move the roller sort of segmentally up and down until we find a spot that feels stiff and tight. We just want to stay here until it becomes less stiff and tight. Now, for a lot of people, you'll find that one side feels stiffer and tighter. So if you're lying on the roller, and you just roll subtly off to one side and then compare it to the other side one side will feel stiffer and tighter than and the other side. Generally, that will correlate to the same side that you're having your hip flexor problems. If not, it doesn't matter because your body doesn't care about left and rights. It just cares about function as a whole. So if you're stiff on the right-hand side, 
anything around that can become dysfunctional, including the left hand side. But for the purpose of this video, let's assume that the stiffness in your back lines up with the same side that you've got some hip flexor pain or some anterior hip pain. And again, you can hang out in this position, you can support your neck if you need to. Uh, the way that I like to do it is I like to have my head on the ground and I just roll around and then just drop my hips down and really create that hinge through that part of my back. But I understand for a lot of people that's not as easy, so you can have a bunch of pillows here. You can lift your hips up and just gently drop that down depending on what feels comfortable for you. But the idea is that you want to segmentally move the roller up and down, pausing on the areas that feel stiff and tight, staying there for 30 seconds, a minute, however long it takes for that to feel less stiff, and then retesting some of those, those uh, activities or uh, movements that annoy the front of the hip. Because what we often find clinically is Say if doing a hip flexor stretch really opens up that hip and potentially exposes some of those symptoms, freeing up your back and then doing that test again can really make it a lot easier straight away because you're almost getting to the root cause of why all of that tissue is dysfunctional in the first place. So again, use a foam roller to find those spots. If not, use a tennis ball or a lacrosse ball and this is in the very same way. Start in the middle of your spine, let it roll off to the side where the joints are compare the sides to see which side feels the stiffest, spend the most time on that side once you're sick of it, then move up a little bit or down a little bit, go hunting for where that stiffness is for you. And in a very short amount of time, you'll be able to understand where your back may be letting you down in terms of the function of your hip, particularly that hip flexor. So, so those four exercises I find really, really useful clinically. Um, they sort of, together, they really form a powerful group of things to improve the way your back and hip function. Um, we should hopefully help you guys feel a little bit better through the front of that hip flexor. Again, if you have clicking or cracking or popping, it's the same understanding, the same exercises apply. Um, so just make sure that you're working through those things. And then finally, to wrap it all up, as we always do, we need to make sure that we have that sort of more adult conversation surrounding why is your back stiff? Why has that hip become stiff in the first place? And unfortunately, the answer for a lot of people um, is sitting and sitting habits. So the once you've found the segment of your spine that maybe feels the stiffest, or maybe there's an area that feels stiffer than the rest, again, there still has to be a reason why that is stiffer than anywhere else. And often that's reflected in the positions that we sort of get into day to day. So if you're on the computer a lot, if you're driving a lot, or you're sitting on the couch relaxing, you'll often find that you might be hinging through a section of your spine um, habitually without realizing, and that part of your spine is becoming stiffer and tighter to cope with that extra load. So. Um, so that can be one of the main reasons for why the back gets stiff where it does. The hip, as I said before, can get stiff just because we spend a lot of time in that sort of 90 degree hip flex position without often sort of extending the hip and going back the other way as often as we probably need to to keep it sort of healthy and free. So, so again, if you're working hard to solve the symptoms and treat those underlying causes of your hip pain or pain at the front of the hip, you also need to make sure that you're putting those tissues in a better position and using them better um, if you want those underlying causes to also go away. So hopefully that sort of gives a good um, broad perspective on a great way to treat that hip flexor pain. Um, and as always, let us know in the comments, what are you experiencing? How is your hip going? Um, give these exercises a go and let us know in the comments how you found them. You know, did you feel like you had that immediate results like we're expecting? If not, let me know because we can sort of guide you through it just in case there's a few things that you may not have been doing as well as you could have. Um, and if you found this information useful, please consider leaving a like and consider subscribing to the channel if you're new, uh, particularly if you really enjoy this sort of broader perspective and this deeper sort of thinking and understanding that we sort of put out about common issues, um, about all the hidden features that tend to cause them. Uh, we're publishing videos relatively frequently, so there's a lot of information to share. So, um, so again, hopefully that was helpful. Let me know if it was or wasn't. Um, we love the feedback and uh, we'll catch you in the next one. Bye.